Hello, welcome. I'm Charles IIT. The Ghana's public infrastructure is at the height of becoming a public risk if adequate resources are not paid to sustainable engineering and maintenance practices. It comes as the country is called a D3 in the recent Ghana Infrastructure Report Card by the Ghana Institution of Engineering. Launching the scorecard in 2022 and 2023, the chairman of the research committee, engineer Magnus Kwashi, projects a bleak regime of poverty if quality infrastructure is not adopted. Okay, if we don't maintain or do timely uh, maintenance interventions, what it means is that uh, whatever infrastructure we have is going to completely deteriorate and it costs us more to, to build new ones. And every day we drive around, we see what happens. If you have a small pothole and you don't patch it, uh, and then people, it becomes a lake, you know, and before you realize, the road is completely gone. I mean, these are, these are simple examples we have. So if we fail to act at the, at the time we are supposed to, then it means that we are heading, we are heading for a crash, okay? So this is, this is basically, basically that, and, and we want to provide this information for policymakers so that we can act timelessly to actually ensure that we, uh, our infrastructure we develop, you know, uh, is on a sustainable basis and can't take us a lifetime. So this is, a, this is really a, a qualitative research that the GHIE intends to contribute to the public discourse. Okay, so uh, if we say we have maybe 1,000 schools, what does it mean? If we say we've built uh, maybe 50,000 kilometers of road, what does it mean to the public? Okay, so it isn't just about the infrastructure. It's relevance, it's efficiency, it's quality. And, and what it does to contribute to improve the quality of life of the people. And so uh, this process actually uh, originated from the American Society of Civil Engineers. Okay, so generally what is happening is, whilst the president is talking about the state of the nation, what our president uh, representing us as institution of engineering is talking about the state of infrastructure. And so we want to contribute the level, I mean, to alert the public, the quality or the level of quality of our infrastructure. Now, if we build schools and they don't help our children, you know, I've been to some schools where uh, I didn't do too much research, but I could tell that in five years they will all have uh, uh, vision problems because you see this nice uh, build, you see this building, honeycomb, honeycomb, not even glass, honeycomb, and the rooms are dark. Okay, you see children sitting on some interesting chairs. You know, they say, oh, they say a GSS chairs. So they give it to some carpenter, no formula, straight back this. And children, people grow up with back pains. I mean, we take these little economics for granted. But what we are this, as an institution is trying to do with this report is actually to contribute to the discourse and to see how uh, policymakers, like he said, uh, politicians or government can take this and then run with to do something. I mean, that's how far uh, we can go. Well, that's engineer Magnus Kwashi, the chairman of the research committee. Meanwhile, the president of the Ghana Institution of Engineering has called for some emergency reforms to ensure the sustainability of the country's infrastructure. If your infrastructure is not in a good order, there's no way you can achieve zero hunger, poverty, and all those fantastic things that uh, the world is trying to achieve. Fortunately, the Ghana Institution of Engineering uh, has given itself the task to alert the general public and to put us on track to ensure that whilst governments have come and are building the infrastructure, we will strategically grade it and then determine exactly where we are with respect to where we intend to go and we will be able to tell the health of the infrastructure based on sound principles, based on sound criteria and well-tested and well-proven approaches. I believe that the areas selected are very important to the national life, to the national discourse. And therefore, um, for us at the institution, we, we are very excited and look forward to this uh, project actually coming out with the real results. And um, I want to say at this 
point that um, the council will do everything possible to make sure that this comes to fruition or reality. And um, we, as we launch this, we also want to appeal, let me make a special appeal, not to uh, uh, government, no, but to all well-meaning Ghanaians and uh, partners who may be able to support such uh, uh, a worthy cause. Because what we want to do is a very independent, um, research-based approach, which I believe that will even include um, views of the general public in the final analysis, so that they will contribute to what they, their view of the infrastructure. Mobile money operators have been given the firm assurance of refunding wrongful deductions on the e-leverage and transfers within three days. Now, the operators since Tuesday have actually started making some refunds, contrary to reports that this will not be realized. Dr. Ken is Chief Executive of the Telecoms Chamber, and he's been speaking to George Riafim on PM Express, the business edition. What happened is that when the law, uh, the minister went to parliament, and announced the policy uh, mm. when he was reading the budget. Um, we started engagement with GRE uh, to prepare for when Parliament finally passes the law, uh, the bill into an act, and the President assents it. So there was quite a lot of activity that had happened. So by the 31st of January, uh, the Commissioner General issued a letter uh, asking that we go on a phased approach. Bear in mind that for us, the EMIs, then same registration of our parent companies were going on. So the, it was going to end on the 31st of July. So the plan was that the first phase was to coincide with that particular one. And for John and the banks, it was they were looking at uh, July when the Bank of Ghana had issued a directive as to when they were also supposed to be using the Ghana cards. Mm. So what our members had left that meeting with was the fact that we're going to work on the phase one, which was without a connection to the common platform. And so all the various uh, developments have been done, tests have been done, and we're ready for that. But when finally the bill was passed into law and was assented by the president, we had a meeting with the Minister for Finance, who then announced to us that we're no more going to go with a phased approach, but we're going to go the full haul, mm. which meant a connection to the common platform. And all of that was supposed to take about a month. Um, but this is a really major project. You know, the number of use cases are so many, the number of customers are so many, the number of charging entities. And so, and you're dealing with money as well. So in terms of the testing, and so we, all our members dedicated a lot of resources to it to try and get our systems ready to be able to go. Mm. Uh, but getting close to the time, we really realized that it was going to be almost impossible to get ready, to be able to test, you know, to and assure customers that everything was going to go seamless. Mm. So we had to write to the Minister for Finance, you know, to petition that we wanted to ensure that customers had a seamless you know, user experience when we, st we went live on 1st of May. So we believe that we should start with the, uh, the on-net, where we did not need to connect to uh, the common platform before uh, you, know, you make any transaction. So when we spoke with the minister, with the GRE also in attendance, it was agreed to this modified phased approach which meant that now the EMIs, the banks, the fintechs, all of us in charging the e-levy, we restricted ourselves to what happened on our networks without necessarily going out. So for us, the EMIs, we call that the on-net transactions. Mm -hmm. So you do our transactions on-net, but you also charged off-net as well. And so because that decision was also taken almost in the last minute. You know, it really took a lot of doing to prepare what you had already prepared, mm -hmm. but you had left and started working towards the common platform and go back to that. And so come Sunday, uh, you know, I, I believe that for this massive nature of this project, uh, we started very well. You know, mm -hmm. there were some challenges, as you would expect with any new project. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, most of them have been fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, those that are still being worked on are things that we know when they are going to be fixed. Typical example is the fact that for one of the networks, 
because they had a cup for uh, their charges, mm. when it came to the levies as well, the law does not allow capping. They were still capping it. So what it resulted in is that if anybody was sending, uh, transferring money on that particular network, and you went above you know, the cap, then the taxes were not added up. Mm. So it means in that particular case, then the, that network, uh, that EMI had to quickly find a way of resolving that, but it had to bear the cost of all the taxes that currently were being undercharged. Mm. You know, so that, that also happened. And then there were situations where, you know, for some of the EMIs, um, airtime, for example, that was not supposed to be taxed, was being taxed when they started it, they had to rectify it. Uh, for some of them, it was the communication of the charges because mm. you needed to split what your charge was and what a tax was. That's Dr. Kena Shigbe, the chief executive of the telecoms chamber there on matters regarding e -Levy. Well, we'll still stay on e -Levy because the GRA has prevailed on religious bodies in the Shanti region to help in the smooth implementation of the levy. The authority believes that religious leaders can positively influence their members to better appreciate the tax handle in national revenue mobilization. The GRA engaged religious leaders on thick fouling of tax returns online via GRA's taxpayers portal, of which we have more in this report. The government has challenged the Ghana Revenue Authority to collect over 80.3 billion CDs in revenue this year. The authority believes this target can be achieved if Ghanaians voluntarily honor their tax obligations. The GRA is, however, urging religious leaders to educate members on the need to pay taxes. Ashanti Area Director of GRA, Agnes Akosia Edubwatin, spoke at the sensitization program for religious leaders. I want to encourage everyone here present also to embrace the electronic levy, the e-levy implementation policy, which began on Sunday, May 1, 2022. Even though few challenges were reported, efforts are being put in place to resolve all the teething problems. As men of God, you also have a responsibility to educate your congregation on the need to honor the actor's obligation. The GRA is piloting the electronic VAT system for collection of revenue added tax. The digital platform deployment by GRA is in line with the Commissioner General's transformational agenda. An e-commerce registration portal has been developed for non-residents engaged in e-commerce and digital services to charge VAT. As I speak with you, our Commissioner General is rolling out a lot of initiatives which we believe we need to engage you. And it is in line with his transformational agenda. The authority is piloting the electronic VAT system, which is an electronic invoicing for VAT collection. Some religious. Leaders who participated in the workshop spoke to Love News. In fact, we were not expecting such an education. Uh, most of Ghanaians don't understand tax paying. Because of that, they don't pay. For example, the artisans, they don't pay tax at all. But right now, what we have learned from here, we are going to educate our church members. To make the way and the GRE, and so on, so on, a kuipa na as church, no, yes, you may be an a free move. We have realized that as a church, we need to also pay our taxes to the Ghana Revenue Authority. Say, I was here to your tax, no, I was say as a church, need to meet your tax, Edema Omano. Anita Sewaju gets reports read to you. We now move to the agri sector because the World Food Programme is supporting agro-processors and other agri value chain players to take advantage of opportunities in the agro sector to be globally competitive. Now, the organization has reiterated its commitment to Ghana to develop a resilient economy which impacts on zero hunger. We have more in this report. 
The World Food Programme, WFP, has started implementing transformative programs that support Ghana to engage competitively with the rest of the world through trade and investment. Two industrial agro-processes have benefited from the World Food Programme initiative. Barbara Tolu Clemens as the representative and country director, WFP. I'm so, it's, it's unprecedented really in our, in my experience in WFP that we have were in on this project for several years and we're seeing the fruits of our labor and not only just the fruits of our labor in terms of the implementation of a project, but we're seeing what the multiplier effects could be for Ghana, could be for Ghana in terms of its GDP, um, increasing um, the, the livelihoods of smallholder farmers, giving them access to markets, giving them access to technical inputs as well as financial inputs, not just for farmers, but also for small processors and medium processors such as premium. One of the agro-processors, Premium Foods, qualified as a producer and supplier of super cereal, a specialized nutritious food to WFP's global operations. The WFP ordered 1,200 metric tons of super cereal from premium foods to be delivered to Burkina Faso. Tom Gabra is founder and managing director of premium foods. Canada's uh, investment really was useful uh, because when it came in, then the other bankers realized, wow, this is something good, let's also move into it. And so they were able to fund it for us. Uh, without the VFP, who did the proposal for the Canadian government to give the, the VFP the money to give us, this whole thing wouldn't have happened. Uh, and we also thank the VFP and also we say, really thank you for the orders. From 2016 to 2021, the WFP implemented an Integrative Nutritious Food Security Initiative dubbed Enhanced Nutrition and Value Chains in Ghana, which was funded by Canada. It's aimed at encouraging the consumption of specialized nutritious foods to help improve pregnant and nursing women, adolescent girls and children's nutrition. We still stay with the uh, agri sector because traders at the publishing market are lamenting about the soaring price of tomatoes. Currently, a box of tomatoes that usually goes for about 1,500 CDs is now selling at 2,800 CDs. That's over 100%. Whilst a small size uh, tomato is going for a CD or two CDs. Now, the rising price of the vegetable is due to the shortage in the country. On the Joy Business Shopping List today, Beverly Broom takes a look at how prices of tomatoes keep soaring, which is expected to impact on preparation of soups and stews across the country. Watch this. Have you noticed the price of tomatoes has shot up drastically? Exactly my reason for coming to the Agbogbolushi market to gauge the price of tomatoes and possibly find out from traders what is accounting for the increase. Join me. This small basket is going for 350 cities. It used to be 150, uh, it used to be 150 cities and it decreased down to 70 and 80 cities. But now, because of the price of tomatoes, which has gone high, we are selling it at 350 cities. And then the big basket, which used to be 150 cities, is now selling at 600 cities. And the paint rubber, which used to be 25 cities, is now selling at 80 cities and 90 cities. Then we come to the small one, which used to be 10 cities, is now selling at 40 cities. Well, this one, the, let's say these ones are not all that good. They are the, the ones that, in fact, got some um, scratches and then this thing from the box. So we put it in a bowl and then sell it at 80 cities. Some are selling it at 700, uh, 70 cities. And then maybe the lowest price right now is 60 cities. The box is selling at, um, that was last week, we bought the box at um, 2,800. But this week, we took the box for 2,600. So it means that the price is going down? Yes, but we hope that it's decreased to the normal price. That is if they get more tomatoes from Burkina. And 
right now they are complaining that the rain, the rain is disturbing the tomatoes. So probably I know the price will be increasing. I am very sure because if you look at the rate at which tomatoes used to come and the rate at which it is coming now, there's a vast difference. M meaning that if we were having like six cars, seven cars coming to Accra, right now we're having like two cars or probably one car coming to Accra. So definitely the price of the tomatoes, I'm not sure it will come down for now. So around what time should we expect the local to come on the market? Oh, local have started coming, but the price in the bush that is costly, it's expensive. They are saying the box in the bush is costing about 1,600. So probably when it comes here, they'll be selling it at 2,000 or probably 1,800. So still, tomatoes will be expensive. In two is born a cost run, and yet a man on a man two is a cost run. We be any me say a real ne buy and be be a cone ni safe for what so. If it is a starting booking ano, na safe for the one forty five. Ya ante swa to na wa e di be we booking a kabe me fan isi be a two weeks a waga abana we. But I drive a phone I know mo ye juma na first law fare no mo ji a hundred and twenty. By your son, but two full money, you know, how many one twenty maybe? How many two hundred? And when Tama young son, he got na yoko no. But we a biya, we be do biya. You three thousand sefa, three thousand sefa. Never gone a scam. I get three hundred thousand. And you man nika ni mono. Oh, bounce na ni ama. I work here ni ma. But we a biya. We be three five thousand sefa. Never gone a scam. I get fifty CD. Into your country, into the barrier, into six. Into six. Barrier, into the 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 barrier, Ana si ebe ti miya pura, ana si ebe ti ma ba odrava kura tu. But all the same, ni nam nyame na de ya nam. Mo ya de ni omo bon kumbo kina, ma na mo ti omo kasa na. Ya ya te kasa na ma akuma akuba, but ni ya ni na ni ya te kasa na. Iti edu boda Ghana boda. Ansa na ebe cross bo Kenya boda ni yo interpreter sa. Omo boda na swamo ne kasa ma yeng. Ansa na intu si ni ya ti miya to. Iti se. Box, no more fun thing. Aye, one hundred and thirty thousand see for one box. And we bag ganas. We bag ganas. Come aye, thousand eight. And some na kwan so, e chi e chi abe kamu. And some na roll fair abe kamu. E din do zuri be fu ori be du ano. E nyabo ketoa. Iti a hanu mo tuan the same box. Last week ino na ya one two eight. E na ka asini be be bu box. Inti bu ane be sana be ten ba form, but. And then, no, I have 25 and 24, but what China could have been so because in those now more to a one nano, how more more pure board and price in a wash or into a channel to a single basket. Says that I should show which in a monotonic six million six hundred grand. I see first number to be told first in a buoy and idea which me by way of credit my hundred gun and I eat a gun by a sea at the upper wing and a sa. Fifty city. The first we grab a ten city and now five city for a banya. Now paint to rub and also eight city. So we pay five city. We pay five city. Over five city, I mean, some of the banya five city. Two per ten city, I get. I mean, some of the banya money are just for bar. I get the amount of ten city. Two city, the banya because we have got on two city two thousand eight. No, but what about Jalan was a two city. You are back at your house to be all yeah. So according to traders, the increment is indeed real. So in case you plan on going tomato shopping this weekend, quick advice: carry lots of cash to the market. Beverly Broom for Joy Business. Indeed, Beverly there with interactions uh, with uh, tomato sellers at uh, Wobbleshi Market. Clearly, the prices of the uh, vegetable has gone up over 100%. We shall have more discussions on this in the subsequent bulletins. But that's how we end Marketplace. I'm Charles IT. For more news, please log on to myjoyonline.com where you can see the story there. SEC uh, Finance Ministry begin discussions to exempt investment transactions from e-levy over cases regarding double taxation.
You, you can find this story and other stories on myjoinline.com. We're grateful that you could join us. Enjoy the rest of our programs.